Auburn plays A&M Saturday. And here's why this is sneaky. So A&M has no margin for error. They already lost, um, humbly, might I add. But they haven't played a conference game yet. And so this is the conference opener, I think, for both teams, Auburn at Texas A&M. A&M's minus 7.5. It's a noon kickoff, Eastern time, on ESPN. Think about this now. There are big once upon a Saturday tour implications here. If Auburn were to win this game as a seven and a half point dog, they would remain undefeated and they would come home to welcome in Georgia next week. CBS game of the week, by the way. So, you know, I love a good trip to Lee County, Alabama. A&M's in desperation mode here. This is the deep end. Okay, if you've ever grown up and you learn how to swim, some of us got thrown in the deep end. Others were allowed to stand in the shallow end and tiptoe their way to where the pool starts to cut off towards the deep end, and you find out how far down that ledge can you walk and still keep your head above water. Well, that's where A&M is right now. They're starting to walk out into the deep end. For the record, so is Auburn. Auburn won this game last year. The Brian Harson-led Auburn Tigers won this game last year 13-10. to Cadillac. You know what, Colin? That's a good call. Cadillac Williams was the head coach by that point. Um, I, I would have been roasted in the comment section for that because that's that game at Jordan-Hare Stadium that was on fire. Huge recruiting weekend, and outsiders probably turned it on and thought, why are these people so fired up? It's college football. They got a lot of pride in the program. That's why they were fired up. So Auburn won 13-10. They outrushed A&M 270-94 that night. However... This is Peyton Thorne's game. This is the Peyton Thorne game because Auburn is a run-first team right now and A&M is allowing under 100 yards per game, even against Miami. Miami didn't run the ball very well against them. Miami just threw the ball all over the place, which begs the question, can Peyton Thorne do the same? Auburn's run the ball 125 times this year. They've thrown it 78. Auburn's leading receiver has 14 catches for 174 yards. It's been a very pedestrian passing offense, Uh, it'll have to be radically different Saturday. Unless you're going plus four turnovers on me, it has to be radically different. But as much as it has to be the Peyton Thorne game for Auburn, I think it very well could be the Connor Wigman game. Connor Wigman can end up being the best quarterback in the SEC this year, and I don't think people are fully on board with it yet because they attribute that loss against Miami to, you know, quarterbacks somehow have win-loss stats. I don't really get how that works, but... He's throwing it for 303 per game, eight touchdowns, two picks so far. He could be in a situation where his game is about to scale up a little bit, and this would be ideally for them where it starts. you got Evan Stewart on that team at wide receiver, Anaya Smith's out there, Noah Thomas, Moose Muhammad. They are deep. They are deep in the pass-catching department. And Connor Wigman has SEC QB1 potential. He he has got a skill set. And it sounds crazy, I know, because it's A&M, and you haven't married yourself to the idea of them being functional offensively yet. He has got all-American potential. He's got that kind of skill set. If he played for Lincoln Riley, he'd be a Heisman contender, is what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, But he doesn't. But that's okay, because you do have Bobby Petrino in the building out there now. The roster view of this, you know, just if you go paper pot, roster, A&M's got a decided talent advantage here. Uh, They are fourth in the 24-7 sports team talent rating, Auburn's 18th. But where the real separation is, and you can, you can do with this whatever you want, A&M's got 10 five-star players on their team. Auburn doesn't have a single one. Let's take a look at what the model thinks. The Vegas number is A&M minus 7.5, and, and the model is it's like a pancake stacked right on top of it. Model is identical nearly to Vegas. It's just off a touch. It's got A&M minus 7. So... Every time, I think you got a game figured out, something crazy happens. So this game right here reminds me of Kansas State and Missouri last week. I don't think anyone's picking Auburn to win this, but the line is one possession. And that's the same way it was with Kansas State last week. Remember, I, I said what I think most people said. Why is this line only three and a half or four, I said. Every, every edge that I can see leans towards Kansas State. Well, then a football game happened, and a a funny outcome occurred. That was a 61-yard walk-off field goal. Is there a path for Auburn here? Yes, there is. I just think there are more paths for A&M. 
So I'll, I'll lean the side. I'll take the percentages, and I'll take A&M, and in a year where I do think they at least possess the offensive ability to get some margin rather than having to win every game by the skin of their teeth, I'll even lay the seven and a half. I think there's a little trap aspect there with that number. So I'll take A&M to win. I'll take them to cover, knowing full well the history of the Auburn program when you pick against them.